Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Up next is a panel discussion on paradigm shift in governance, adoption of digital technologies in the new normal. I would like to invite Karthik Sharma, Senior Associate Editor, ET Government, to lead the discussion. Over to you, Karthik. Hello everyone, I am Karthik Sharma from ET Government Economic Times and I welcome all of you at the ET Government Transforming Odisha 2022, a virtual summit. Today we are here for a panel discussion on a very important and significant topic which is paradigm shift in governance, adoption of digital technologies in the new normal. As we all know that uh, from last, last couple of years, we, uh, the world has seen the corona pandemic and uh, uh, it, this pandemic uh, has came up with a lot of challenges for us but also we have seen a lot of digital opportunities we have seen uh, the digital ways to combat that, that covid-19 pandemic and which has now become part of our life and governance is uh, uh, also impacted a lot uh, and uh, at the same time, govern in governance also, uh, a lot of digital means are being used now. Uh, so we have been discussing with the leaders uh, in the governance sector of the uh, of the uh, state of Odisha on how uh, the digital ways are now changing the scenario in the governance ecosystem uh, in this new normal uh, in the state of Odisha. First of all, I'll be introducing the panelists who are uh, taking part in this discussion. I'll first uh, invite and welcome uh, um, Shri Arun Bhotra, Transport Commissioner come, and uh, Chairman of State Transport Authority, Government of Odisha. Welcome, Mr. Arun. And I also welcome uh, Mr. Mohammad Sadiq Alam, Director of Industries, Government of Odisha. He is also CEO of Startup Odisha and Managing Director of Odisha Small Industries Corporation Limited, OSIC. Welcome, uh, Mr. Sadiq. Mr. Sanjay Kumar Mishra, Managing Director of Orissa Power Transmission Corporation Limited, OPTCL. Welcome, Mr. Mishra. Uh, Mr. Trilochan Panda, Managing Director of Grid Corporation of Orissa, Gridco. Welcome, Mr. Panda. And Dr. Manuranjan Uthil, who is Managing Director of Orissa Knowledge Corporation Limited, OKCL. I also welcome uh, Mr. Sohan Nautia, Head of State E-Governance Mission Teams, SEMT, Orissa. I once again welcome all our panelists. So uh, let me start with um, a department which was so active during the last two or three years of uh, COVID-19 pandemic and uh, was, uh, was fighting with one of the biggest challenges of uh, transporting people uh, during the pandemic. So uh, my question is to Mr. Arun Bhotra, Transport Commissioner of the, the State of Orissa. Uh, so please tell me about uh, the key steps taken by the transport department in Odisha to ensure the delivery of seamless, uh, seamless citizen-centric services across the state. Also, let us know please about how you are leveraging the cutting edge technology and uh, the technology packed solutions to enhance the operational efficiency and establish the transparency. And one of the most important thing is to provide hassle-free, safe travel uh, experience to the commuters. So please let us know about the key initiatives of the department. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sharma, for inviting me to this program. Uh, on behalf of my department and the government, I am thankful that you are giving us a platform to tell what all we are doing uh, to bring technology in, in the governance. Odisha Transport Department, Mr. Sharma, I, I, I am happy to tell you we are one of the most advanced uh, departments in the country as far as technology is concerned. Uh, in fact, I keep getting calls from other states that they want to, some, some states they want to come and visit and see our systems here. We started our uh, computerization and uh, uh, way back, way back, say around 15, 20 years ago. What I can tell you today, we have totally faceless registration system. If you buy a vehicle, if you remember there was a time and the impression that you buy a vehicle and you go to 
RTO office and stand there for a long time and all and all. Now that is a thing of past. It is totally faceless registration system. The it is online. All kinds of applications are registered uh, are, are submitted online, and the registration is also done online. There is no need for the vehicle owner to come to the RT office and show the vehicle and all. All the DL related service also uh, this uh, driving license related services only when the person has to come and given give a test that he can drive. That is the only time when the drive the person has to come. Otherwise, there is no need to come. Everything is online. Similarly, a uh, lot of permits, you know, transport department gives a lot of permits. So all kinds of permits in our state, they are online. Nobody needs to come to our office. Our effort is to make the RTO office zero footfall office, where nobody comes. Everything is online. Person can sitting somewhere in his own state. He can pay the tax. He can ask for the permit. He can get the permit. He can take a print out of the permit and give it to driver. And the driver can run the, the vehicle in our state. Similarly, all the payments, I'm, I'm happy to share with you, we do not take any cash in our offices. All the payments are electronically done. Even when you chalan, uh, the, the chalans on the road, they're also electronically issued. One more thing recently we have done is the geofencing of the bus permit system and, and, and the vehicle fitness system. Like somebody wants to get the vehicle, you know, there was earlier an issue that Vehicle in some other district will get uh, get the fitness certificate in some other district, and some manipulation was was being done. But now the vehicle has to have come to a geofenced area. Only in that area, a, a vehicle fitness uh, can be can be certified. Fitness of the vehicle can be certified. Uh, you ask what other things we have done. Our department has done for the uh, good service to similar service to the people. Uh, I can tell you a few things very quickly. Number one, our uh, appointments are now online. Like somebody wants to come to RT office for something, some work. Though we try, the person should not come. But in case somebody wants a, a, a kind of a service which is not available online as of now, the person can book a slot online. That means you, you take an appointment online, you get a number, you get a time period, like, you know, the, like passport offices, like passport offices, you take a time, come there at that slot and you do not you do not need to wait basically so the waiting time we have we are trying to make it 15 to 20 minutes maximum person should not stay in our office similarly uh, we have a control room 24 by 7 control room we have established there people can call people can lose their complaints and it is reverted back in most of the cases the call is reverted back telling the uh, what what action has been done on the on the uh, on the complaint. So overall, by and large, I'll be happy someday if uh, somebody can visit, uh, you can visit our offices, RT offices anywhere in the state. Most services are on online. Most appointments are online. And people do not need really come to our offices. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are working towards that. And I think 80 to 90% work has already been over. Thank you so much. That's great to know that uh, you are innovating in the transport sector, which needs a lot of innovations and leveraging technology for seamless services to people. I think serving people with technology is the best use of technology that you can make. And uh, that's great to know about it. And I think the audience, uh, a lot of transport stakeholders must be watching uh, this discussion and uh, as invited by you, they can definitely come to this and uh, see uh, the great results of leveraging technology. Thank you, Mr. Arun, for um, giving us a good glimpse of uh, technology usage in transport uh, sector in Odisha. I would like to now uh, move on to Mr. Sadek Alam. Uh, transport is important. At, at the same time, uh, if you have a good transport and other, other, other things in the state, then it's, it's good for industrial development also. And when we talk of uh, industries, startups uh, make, uh, you know, startup and small industries make a great count uh, uh, in uh, the growth and development of a state's industrial environment. Uh, Mr. Sadiq Alam, I would like to ask you that, um, as you all know, that Odisha is one of the most advantageous states in terms of ease of doing business. So what are the initiatives that are taken by the industries department of Odisha to extend all support and fac facilitation to the industries and the investors in particular. Uh, thank you, Karthik. Uh, first of all, I must thank the entire team for organizing this uh, such a beautiful program. 
and also uh, setting uh, giving a very uh, important topic for today's panel discussion so i will just respond to this question uh, uh, starting like uh, uh, i am very happy to share that uh, you all know that our state uh, odisha brought first legislation in the country for the single window clearance system which enables investor to approach a single designated authority and seek all clearances and approvals in a time bound framework now uh, that go seat uh, that is called in fact is a single window uh, for the investor facilitation and tracking is a technology reform under now an investor delight basically it is a kind of one stop solution for all the stakeholders uh, i will give a uh, few examples It is a combination of various portals. In fact, it's an integrated portal, GoSwift, which combines with uh, like InfoWizard, Go Plus, Go Care, and so on. Just to give a brief about that, okay, let's take example of InfoWizard, which basically provides customized uh, information about investment opportunities, incentive, and the required approvals. Similarly, Go Plus, which is basically a portal for land use and the services. This speaks about the land banks created by Edco and uh, dedicated for industrial projects in Odisha, which actually helps our entrepreneurs in identifying the lands uh, before selection. Before selection, everything due tag, they can also see, they can visit, and they can also choose the best land parcel for their best suited for, for uh, actually best suited to their own projects. It is very helpful and also. through this portal the facilities for approvals and clearances uh, provides for more than 56 uh, g2b services from 18 departments again uh, if you take example of go smile that is also a sub component of this portal it is a first of its kind because it is a kind of synchronized inspection framework which is a central inspection framework for the industry in the state covering directorate of factories and boiler labor directorates and also pollution control board uh, again e suvidha portal which is very popular has been developed for uh, resolving the issues and uh, for tracking projects with investment about uh, above 50 crores up to 1000 crores at we decided to remove implementation bottleneck in these uh, projects basically uh, there is one automated post allotment uh, application because uh this actually this is the portal which provide the post allotment service right to and uh, it has been developed to facilitate basically online registrations application for any post allotment matters online payment application tracking processing activities etc and uh, you would be happy to know that there is one go care uh solution which basically provide a one shop one stop shop for all csr act related activities it will guide the corporates about the human development indices and the priority gap areas uh, for various sectors and the uh, making use of csr activity towards development of the state uh, in overall this is very fruitful for them also to choosing the best uh, project which will have a large impact on the society i would like to also mention about uh, here that that recently this gosweep has been also upgraded upgraded and the upgraded version is that is called swift 2.0 which has been developed an integrated approval mechanism for multiple services which will be provided at one go and uh, it will also it is a, like integrated payment module for multiple that has been multiple services has been incorporated under this uh, uh, upgrade version of swift portal and also we have added some grievance module for the investor too in this this is about the industry department the other segment is also that uh, msb department which deals with the micro small and the is uh, 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 medium enterprises they have also provided all the services through emsb seva uh, which is a combination of like aim portal which basically deals about the all kind of incentive provided to the msmes and also uh, all the services provided with the director epm and the uh, marketing that has been also incorporated in this emsme seva and the service provided by the state financial corporation by way of olis and the services by orms for the rebate management system services of the khadi board and also the online consultancy marketing information system provided by the osic all such thing has been integrated in this and you would be happy to know that the almost 24 services 
uh, of the MNP department are rolled out or notified under this RTPC Act and uh, enabling entrepreneurs to avail all services online. These all services are online and also receive a they can receive, they can apply, the application can be processed, they can receive the comprised acknowledgement, they can also check the status of application anytime, anywhere. So these are the uh, uh, states that has been uh, taken on the digital platform. We will still be revisiting our online existing platform and uh, we want to upgrade uh, all the platform, adding more features to that, which will be very user friendly for the interference too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, um, I think uh, Mr. Alam, I think providing all these services online is very, very significant and crucial to attract investors because uh, we, ha we have seen that a lot of investments, um, um, you can um, uh, miss the investments uh, when uh, the, these uh, glitches are there in the process. Process is very important and using technology in the process is a good move. Thank you so much. And uh, now we will be moving on uh, to the uh, next panelist and uh, from transport to industries to another very important um, uh, sector which is facing a lot of challenges but also coming up with a lot of opportunities which is power and uh, we have here with us uh, managing director of Orissa power transmission corporation OPPCL, uh, mr sanjay kumar mishra uh, welcoming you here mr mishra and i'll be asking the question to you on uh, the transmitting quality how technology can help in transmitting the quality, uh, you know, making it reliable and uh, to um, uh, get the secured power with minimum transmission loss at a very competitive price. A lot of things in one question, but uh, how technology can uh, solve these challenges, please tell us. Uh, thank you very much. Really, I'm very happy to be here in this panel discussion today. And it's a nice uh, effort by the organizers to have this. Uh, just I will give a very brief uh, introduction of this organization because generally it is not known to the public because we don't deal at the level of the small consumers, that means household and everything. Uh, OPTCL has come into existence in 2005, April 1st. So in last April, we completed its 17th birthday. And in the process of it, in since 2005 to 2022, this organization has grown by 150 percent. If you look at its transmission uh, line, we have got 23,000 circuit kilometer of transmission line of various capacity: 132 kV, 220 kV, and 400 kV. And we have got uh, capacity that means transmission capacity of around 20,000 megawatt. But our state consumes peak demand, which Mr. Panda, our MD Gridco will be agreeing, only 5,000 megawatt. That means our consumption is only 5,000 megawatt, that is the peak demand. If you go by average demand, then it is hardly coming 4,300 megawatt. So to that extent, you can say that we are transmission surplus. And we also say that uh, Odisha is power surplus for that matter. However, in the whole process of it, in last uh, five to six years, we have done one of the human surveys by taking electricity to the doorstep of the people. And our availability of electricity to the common consumer is higher than the national average. It is 97.5%. That means 97.5% of the houses have got electricity today. And that is because of the active effort of uh, and the support of the state government. We have even augmented our distribution capacity at the village level, which is 33 by 11 kV. And primary substations also we have created. So you can very well say that we have reached to that last mile connectivity where everybody has access to electricity. And OPT cell, which is not known for one thing, is we are doing also the broadband connectivity through our optic fiber ground wire. And uh, to that extent, we have now reached to all the gram panchayats. That is the first step of this process. After that, we will be reaching with internet to all the houses of the state. And 
we are again getting into the final stage of this uh, odisha power distribution system and its augmentation that is odssp4 and spending around the 2000 crore in giving that wherever the discounts because some of the patches of the state are not commercially viable is not remunerative for the discounts the state government has pitched in with another 2000 crore investment where we are even laying the lines of 33 kV and 11 kV, by which the lift irrigation, uh, that means when the water deficit area, when they suffer for irrigation and everything, lift irrigation and other high lift irrigation areas can be properly catered to by power. And your question, uh, that means I am saying that we are the best in the country. Just three days before we have received an award for our SLDC, that is State Load Dispatch Center, the best SLDC in the country. Every year we are getting award from the government and also the incentive part from Odisha Electric Regulatory Commission because our system availability is 99.98%. That's the best in the country. And second thing, our transmission loss is hardly 3%. Only to achieve this, we have done many technological interventions, like we have introduced low loss conductors, where the transmission efficiency will be increasing and loss of transmission will be minimized. And HTLS is another high temperature, low shack conductors. That is again, it can transmit higher power with less transmission loss. <laughs> And at the grid substation level also, we have gone for uh, many new technologies whereby we will be able to map properly that which equipments are creating problems for us and uh, to that extent how it will be able to, and we will be able to match that and finally attain uh, the proper efficiency. So basic at this moment, we need to see that. And as we are not really dealing at the level of the consumers, however, we deal at the level of the industries. We have uh, launched a portal which is called uh, Sanjog, where the industries, because new industries are coming up and they require power. So directly they will be able to apply their requirement of the power. And we will be able to give them the answer that what is the power availability of ours and how we will be able to carry it forward from there. And we deal at the level of the EPC contractors, those who execute projects for us. We have launched also a portal which is known as D3, Drawing Design and uh, Demand, by which we will be able to, this will be all online mode of uh, submission of the drawings, various project drawings and everything, and final approval through the online system. So they are not able, they are not required to come to the office. Besides that, if you look at it at the other transmission SLDC, which I was talking to you, it has done a lot of uh, technological interventions and that will be in a long list and may not be of any interest to the common people, those who will be participating in that. But it's a regular effort and uh, we are continuously doing and upgrading ourselves as far as technology is concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mishra. Uh, I think highlighting this technology intervention by OPDCL is, uh, I think, will be very uh, knowledge rich uh, uh, session it is going on uh, in terms of technology intervention. We are getting to know. Uh, now, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, this uh, uh, technology intervention in power sector, I think uh, it is very important uh, uh, in the case of grid management also. And uh, we have here uh, Mr. Thilujan Banda here, uh, Managing Director of Grid Corporation of Odisha, Gridco. And uh, uh, while congratulating Mr. Mishra for winning this uh, award this year as well, uh, like all the years, I will now move on to uh, Mr. Panda. Uh, Mr. Panda, please tell us about uh, uh, what are the key issues uh, that are impacting the power sector? And also tell us, uh, as I, I was telling, uh, as I, I was speaking about the grid management, the grid security and grid parity. So how digital innovations uh, can shape the future of 
uh, great parity and great security, uh, Mr. Dilochan Panda. Thank you, Mr. Karthik. Uh, it's uh, for inviting me for this webinar. Uh, uh, this is a very contemporary topic, as you all know. Uh, the, the, the most important thing is, uh, uh, particularly the power sector, actually, for a reliable and economic, uh, competitive and environmental friendly, sustainable electric system is the uh, cornerstone of uh, any economy, any society. So, so the presently we are uh, India is uh, uh, facing a lot of challenges, and we are riding a, a digital uh, wave uh, per, per se. Actually, and because of the industrial revolution, presently is uh, is building on the digital revolution itself, and uh, with multiple technologies being applied, uh, there is a huge uh, paradigm shift uh, in the economy, in the business, in the society, as well as in the individual and the common people at large also. So I am seeing in the power sector, uh, there are a lot of game changing disruptions should be happening. I mean, if I call it actually disruptions. So what are those disruptions or the issues you can say? The one is actually the, uh, as you understand, actually we are moving towards a society of electricity where actually a lot of decarbonization is happening both in the transport sector as well as in industry sector and also in electricity sector as well. So decarbonization is one. And, uh, and secondly, a uh, lot of things are happening for decentralization, actually. So, so the power is moving from the center to uh, the state, to the district, to the panchayats, to the people, actually. So this is a lot of decentralization is also happening. So another thing which is happening is digitization, actually. So the common man knows the services. Uh, so, so all kinds of technology interventions are happening. So this is digitization. So, as you understand in the electricity sector, actually our primary responsibility is to give service to our citizens our, and to the nook and corner of the country. And uh, so as you understand, both uh, customer preferences or expectations are also changing and shifting towards uh, um, you know, carbon emissions, fewer carbon emissions. And uh, you, everyone wants actually real-time interactions. For example, somebody makes an electricity payment, he wants that actually that credit should be happening um, instantaneously. So real-time interactions are uh, very much uh, expected by the consumers. And um, uh, people look at higher transparency. Uh, people look at more reliable electricity system also and security as well. And they, I mean, they, they want actually, it should be a secured electricity power system. So there are uh, in, the, in the electricity sector, both at the operational level as well as the uh, consumer centric level, there are large scale deployment of digital technologies in the past. And it has been uh, you know, kind of evolving over the years. Um, as I am seeing for the last 25 years in my power sector experience, I've been seeing there are digitalization both at the operational level in the grid. There are micro grids, there are you know, SCADA operations, both at uh, transmission level, as now it has come down to the distribution uh, or distribution level also. So we are moving towards a <clears throat> government of India has gone a big way in implementing smart metering system and investing almost 300,000 uh, crores uh, in the smart metering system in the coming five years to reduce the losses. And uh, so the automated uh, metering infrastructure, which is created on the cloud, and there are sensors. And even beyond the meter also, there are a lot of innovations are happening. For example, I, as you all know, there are a lot of beyond the meter, there are a lot of new technologies which are happening on the internet of things. Like you can switch on, switch off your uh, uh, gadgets uh, outside the outside your house. So you can save electricity also. So a lot of, uh, uh, you know, as, as, you, as you connect all the devices through a digital mechanism, so it will, it will, uh, uh, kind of uh, make a huge change in the you know the power sector itself so with the advent of uh, the smarter and more decentralized and more connected electric system uh, it will increase more reliability more security and as well as uh, sustainability in the system and um, and as you understand actually so all these require a huge challenge actually in the society in, in, in the electricity itself it's a regulated sector 
power sector is a regulated sector. So we have to redesign our regulatory systems and also embrace different business models. For example, it cannot be one kind of business model like we acquire an asset and again, we implement the system and there are a lot of new models or business models are coming. For example, this smart metric system is coming on a, you know, Cortex model called, they call it in government of India, it's called, I mean, build, own, operate and kind of manage on their own. So there are a lot of business models are also coming in and there are large scale adoption of digital solutions in the whole electric system, uh, which has a potential for transforming the electricity industry itself. And that will create a lot of choices for consumers, be it uh, uh, payment, be it billing, be it uh, uh, a new connections to be brought into his house. So there are a lot of challenges which will be happening. A lot of choices will be coming from the customers and it will achieve greater efficiency. It will, have, it will kind of uh, uh, lead to more decarbonization in the country as well as in the uh, earth. And there are, it will bring in more economies, uh, economies, and it will bring in more uh, kind of uh, value additions for the uh, stakeholders as well as consumers of the country. So, so this is my opening uh, kind of remarks actually how technology can change the power industry. Thank you. I think uh, sharing your thoughts on uh, the usage of Internet of Things and all sort of new technologies and how they are changing the scenario of uh, 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 metering as well as the uh, grid management. Thank you so much. And now I'll be moving on to Dr. Manuranjit Puthal, who is Managing Director of Odisha Knowledge Corporation Limited, OKCL. Uh, uh, Mr. Puthal, we know that uh, OKCL tries a lot of things to um, enhance the knowledge and skill set of the students or the youth um, and the students of the uh, state. Uh, but I think uh, uh, while I was researching about OKCL, I got to know that uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, OKCL, help, OKCL helped a lot of youngsters to hold on to their jobs. So, uh, quickly, the, throwing some light on that uh, experience. And along with that, uh, what all sort of things OKCL is doing in terms of uh, digital interventions uh, to make the life better of the youth of the state. Thank you, Mr. Karthik Sarma, Karthik Sarma for inviting me and to the Transforming Odisha Conclave. I want to congratulate ET uh, Business for hosting this kind of a conclave. Thank you very much. And uh, your questions is very much uh, relevant in this current uh, context of economy and the current, current context of knowledge. Converting knowledge to wealth is our job, the job of Odisha Knowledge Corporations. Really, we are insisting youth, those are in our society to use their knowledge and generate wealth for the society and generate wealth for themselves. Then when we are talking about the pandemic and how we help the youth to hold into the job, is really a big challenge for all of us. Then if we look into the challenges, very, uh, in this very simple language, we are facing six simultaneous languages uh, six, six simultaneous challenges to face, uh, to uh, empower the youth to hold into the jobs. The first one is the, you know, the bigger clientele. The youth are uh, in millions, those are searching jobs in this current context in our society. And always we're trying them to learn something better, to deliver something which is relevant for the customers and to own something for themselves. And we are also helping them to learn those technologies and those ideas in a very cheaper price and in a faster space and wider access to the society. Like we have used there in Malkanagiri to Moirbhanj, those are searching jobs. We have used there from Ganjam to Kandrapada, those are searching jobs. Across the states during pandemic, each and every youth are searching jobs for their sustainability, for their livelihood. As you know that till that, during the period of 10 years, we have created around 1.5 million youths in Odisha as IT literate. 
and in our programs we are helping them to understand the requirement there in the gig economy that in that digital freelancing cyber freelancing and physical freelancing world so what we did we uh, we all as a team divided all this district into certain clusters then interacted along with them to explore the possibilities of earning something there in this digital freelancing world then i am so happy to share with you many of the youths with their digital skills with their communication skills are started doing the work in this gig economy means very small works you know at that time many companies are operating digitally offices are closed people are started working from the home and they are also in search of people they will help to enable their processes they need people to help them to create their presence digitally so that their business will be viable their business will happen in some way then we have our partners there in each districts around 400 500 uh, point of presence 500 centers are working across the states and we through that 500 centers we connect we connected the use to deliver their expertise to deliver their knowledge to convert their knowledge to work to convert their knowledge to wealth and start doing something start applying there in this digital freelancing world and you don't even believe many of the youths started working as a digital freelancers help many business houses to do their business at the same time they started earning something for themselves we also consolidated all the data at that time that who is doing what who is doing what kind of jobs along with the different business houses and the data data says within a period of one year approximately each and every youth on around 8000 rupees in each month doing physical uh, doing digital freelancing staying and uh, staying at home and helping others to do so and very interestingly many of them did very small jobs and helping the, helping the corporates to do their business means creating their product, product portfolio there in the social platforms and helping them to maintain a digital skill for their daily life and helping them to build use that government services you know many of the services in our states are digitally offered and how to use those services and get connected to the government and also we help 30000 teachers to use 21st century study skills how to deliver education then all schools are at that time uh, we all know that uh, all are closed students are at home uh, at home so we are helping them how to deliver the education and similarly also we help the people with remote working skills my uh, students youth helps many people and get them acquainted into how to work from home how to use digital technology in at the same time and not only connecting them to the digital space freelancing and gig economy also we help them to get connected into different physical freelancing modes of doing the operations means many shops those are at that time closed we help them to board in into amazon we help them to board in into the flipkart so how to convert that physical businesses in that digital form that way we help not less than 3 uh, to 4 lakhs of youths in odisha getting connected with the digital space and doing business uh, helping others to do business digitally and also creating a space in this gig economy for the their livelihood and helping the state government and helping the uh, our uh, society to improve the livelihood and uh, to learn a new way of earning then the, the this way uh, we try to get connected the use during pandemic to their livelihood 
and to their living souls. Thank you, Mr. Sama. Thank you so much, Mr. Manoranjan. Great to know that uh, how you um, help the youth of the state uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Thank you so much. And now I move on to Mr. Sohan Nautial, Head of State E-Governance Vision Team, SEM Teorisa, one of the key stakeholders of uh, promoting IT uh, and managing e-governance in the state. Uh, Mr. Nautial, my question to you is that how Odisha is using the digital technologies to raise the bar of e-governance excellence, as simple as that. Please tell us. Uh, thank you, Karthik. Uh, I would like to thank ET to give me opportunity and it's my privilege to be part of this panel discussion on paradigm shift and governance adaptation of uh, digital technology in new normal. So uh, digital technology has played a vital role to raise uh, the bar for uh, the governance perspective. And unprecedented uh, COVID-19 and post outbreak of uh, COVID-19, there was a physical movement restriction and uh, technology intervention, intervention was very important. And uh, digital technology has uh, done a lot during this period as well. Uh, government has conveyed that uh, people of state will have freedom not to visit the government offices for any services. They will have the option of online services for, or professionally run and uh, more seva can or uh, door uh, delivery. Okay, So that's the, uh, these are the places where we see that digital technology intervention was very much required for service of uh, 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 for the citizens to avail the government services. So one of the key, uh, uh, so, some of the key uh, uh, initiatives I will be di discussing. Uh, you know, uh, one of the key applications that most Sarkar initiative uh, where uh, making governance people centric and uh, it is based on the fight uh, model of uh, governance uh, where uh, the transparency, technology, teamwork and uh, timeline transformation, okay? So the Mosaka, which is uh, strengthening of uh, the governance and optimization of efficiency of government, ser uh, government services. So uh, there are around the, the you know, where, where different uh, feedback was collected for around more than 222 services by the government uh, uh, people for 28 departments. Okay, so ultimately, how exactly you know where the uh, digital technology intervention comes into picture is that uh, the people sentiment analysis was done for uh, you know based on uh, the AI technology. Okay, so having said that, um, the other uh, key application like uh, Jan Sunani, uh, one of the application uh, we, uh, which is again a, a citizen centric web portal and a web cache, mm -hmm. like web chatbot. Okay. Citizen can use uh, uh, WhatsApp uh, chatbot to for the grievance registration and tracking as well. And they, they can use the mobile app for the grievance registration and tracking. And uh, so that authority can use web portal for the grievance resolution. So the re resolution can be done through or by use of uh, the web portal as well. Okay. And uh, there is a workflow system also, so that wherever the, no, uh, you know, in order to, as part of uh, uh, to resolve the, it, uh, uh, the faster grievance resolution perspective. Then there was another uh, uh, key initiative and which was launched in the March, uh, March 2021. Uh, so that is a single portal, uh, no, a unified solution that a citizen can use mobile app for avail government services by use of uh, Odisha One app, okay, can use uh, uh, payment gateway for any payment uh, of utility bills or so and so forth, okay. So, uh, and citizen can use, uh, even it is integrated with uh, the DigiLocker, which is integrated with, uh, uh, integrated uh, to get authentic documents such as driving license or mask card or, uh, you know, other card, okay. And as the identity, uh, okay, as part of which is part of the verifications. Uh, having said that, uh, this single window uh, no, platform that is Odisha One, uh, okay, what all the different uh, services it has, uh, like mail, well, and mobile app also, and even uh, a dashboard for monitoring the service delivery timelines, and 
it, and it is integrated with a uh, number of other government applications uh, and uh, and a single uh, uh, registration for all the services then multiple payment gateway and apart from that a single url which has around 510 and more than more 510 services available currently and there are other uh, things also as part of the digital uh, technology intervention uh, like government schemes are transferred to citizen in dbt a mode that direct uh, transfer mode or uh, where uh, intermediaries are completely eliminated and apart from that uh, students can avail online classes and uh, government uh, also has started online classes for the student in various district of uh, the state through the online uh, uh, video streaming platform and apart from that in medical uh, in, uh, industry perspective telemedicine platform to provide distance me medical uh, assistance during the pandemic so um, so these are some of the things which i thought of just sharing and uh, yes there are good, uh, quite good number of uh, uh, applications were developed uh, for different departments uh, you know uh, for the you know for the, for the citizens uh, innovations in the it and scmt team on risa is doing some great work in uh, putting those innovations the technology innovations on the ground thank you so much for highlighting those initiatives uh, I, I will come back to you, Mr. Um, Arun Botra, Transport Commissioner and Chairman of the State Transport Authority of Odisha. Uh, Mr. Arun, uh, there are two important aspects of transport, uh, which I will uh, request you to throw some light on. Uh, first is uh, the road safety. Uh, which government is uh, every state's government tries to promote a lot. So how we can leverage technology in road safety, and also one more important thing is bringing transparency, transparency in the enforcement uh, in the area of enforcement. So uh, let us know the use of technology in road safety in uh, Odisha, and your plans to use the technology-backed solutions in bringing transparency in, in enforcement. I'm uh, really thankful that you raised this issue of road safety. Uh, see, there are two parts of uh, transportation. One, you can see that two things. One is driver who is driving the vehicle. One is driver who is driving the vehicle. Another is the vehicle itself. So if you are making the vehicle safe, if you are making a driver who is good driver, and third is the road. So we have to look at the three things. For the driver, the driving licensing system we are changing very very quickly. I think by end of this year, the driving licensing system is going to see a very big change. The licensing system will be totally automated. By use of technology, the camera will decide, the video camera will decide whether you are capable of driving or not. Rather than the human, uh, somebody, some sitting officer sitting there and telling that, okay, you are passed, you are failed. So this system is going to change. The, the Cameras, video cameras, video analytics that will be implemented to see that whether you, whether the applicant is capable of driving or not. That is number one. Number two about the vehicles. Now vehicles have to be fit to, to ply on the road. Right now the vehicle fitness is decided again by a human intervention. An officer decides whether the vehicle is fit or not to ply on the road. Now this also we are changing by mid next year. We are coming up, we have already come up with one center that is called Inspection and Certification Center in Katak. We are coming up with six more in the state. And by end of 2023, the vehicle fitness will be totally automated. That means the, the machines will decide whether this particular vehicle is fit to fly on the road or not. Third is enforcement, as you mentioned. We are already in a process of putting a lot of cameras, a lot of high resolution camera on the roads. The project is already going on. About 140 kilometers we have picked up in the first phase. So these cameras will be basically uh, identifying the vehicles, very clear resolution. They can read the numbers. Clearly they can show the number and they will find whether the vehicle is on a high speed whether the person has put the helmet or not, whether the person has put the seat belt or not, whether there are three people on a, on a two-wheeler, all kinds of enforcement activities will be moved to the camera. So, of course, you cannot put human beings everywhere 
and when human beings are there there may be error of judgment there may be some kind of allegation also that they are not doing the work properly so we are moving to the technology the camera will decide whether you are putting the helmet or not whether you are putting the seat belt or not and accordingly i am telling you that the chalan system will be integrated with the camera now as soon as the camera picks up somebody driving the vehicle without helmet it will send the message and the picture to the system and system will issue the chalan and chalan will reach uh, the, the person's mobile phone by an sms so practically uh, without any human intervention by the time you reach your home without helmet before that you will get the chalan so that is uh, that is the system you are putting in the enforcement so that uh, human intervention is less in in driving testing in in the vehicle testing in driving license and enforcement this is where we are going maybe next one to two years thank you i think that's great i think uh, nothing can be a better usage of technology in streamlining these processes in transport sector thank you so much mr arun for uh, giving us insights of this usage of technology. technology in the in bringing transparency enforcement and also in road safety in all the aspects thank you so much uh, mr alam uh, i'll be uh, coming to you uh, with one of the very important and uh, significant things which is going on in the country is one district one product odop scheme uh, i think um, uh, the government of odisha has identified i think under this odop scheme is they have identified 30 different products for 30 districts so uh, how are you leveraging the technology back solutions to take local products to the global market to make things local uh, this is a very new scheme in fact we are we have entered into the second year of this implementation uh, here the department of msme government of odisha acting as a state uh, nodal department and uh, who has adopted a holistic and integrated approach Uh, for uh, promotion of this scheme in the state uh, before in fact describing about the cutting edge technology just i would mention i will take only one or two minutes time only briefly mention about the methodology that has been adopted by government of odisha to identify these odp products in the state what we have done our government has first undertaken a baseline and a group study survey uh, for the all 30 districts in the state uh, to identify this odop and accordingly this 16 products in fact uh, were identified as a uh, odp for 30 a uh, number of districts uh, depend on that uh, basing on that uh, report of the study uh, definitely all these products uh, have been selected uh, having a very good potential uh, to penetrate in local not only in local also at national and international market now coming to the technology but of course without technology we cannot do anything uh, as of now what we are doing as of now if you look into the entire uh, uh, daily chain on this uh, agri business and uh, we are blessed with uh, 11 to 12 agro climatic reason but still varieties of agricultural products and horticultural products are as of uh, only for the table top farmers as of now we have not grown to that level as the agri business to uh, improve that thing we are definitely using that cutting edge technology and uh, to give the value addition to the entire uh, food processing sector and uh, so that okay, we can uh, create that enhanced ecosystem for the food enterprises here so uh, just to mention that first we have uh, created one digital platform that has been developed for the beneficiaries to apply under this pmfe scheme and uh, to enhance outreach program outreach of the scheme at the field level we have organized a uh, more than 50 online workshop uh, to provide trainings to more than uh, 500 more than 5000 in fact participants including government officials uh, of different directorates drps that is a district uh, resource person who has been appointed for all the districts ssg groups fpos uh, cooperatives and also to the individual beneficiaries and uh, just to promote the activity uh, department is also uh, leveraging a uh, various social media platform for promotion of odp products and uh, its wider outreach to the potential market too uh, we have created uh, one district social media page that has been created with a dedicated odop email address this will help in uh, basically highlighting key features of odop in the respective districts which will definitely attract private sector investment in uh, food processing and related sectors 
uh, and also an e-commerce uh, platform shall be developed uh, uh, to enhance this B2C and B2B ecosystem uh, for these micro food processing enterprises and the state itself. Departments will also uh, working towards attracting market maybe startups uh, in Odisha uh, to support these micro food processing enterprises for wider outreach uh, to national and international markets. And you would be happy uh, to know that we have a large presence of the startup who's actually working on the e-commerce platform and also for the product designing and the marketing. So we will leverage uh, that uh, uh, facility available with us also. And we are trying to type within this uh, food enterprises too. Uh, we have also taken an uh, IT-based initiative that is called very unique, that is Know My District. Each district have that piece available, that profile available. If you know My District is basically to enhance the know-how of the government officials, some unique features of 50 districts of Lisa. It is basically focusing on the, uh, focusing or highlighting about the district profile, what is the district demography, what is the food specialty of the district. It also highlights and the potential uh, of the food processing sector in the states, uh, what is the ODP strategy for the particular district, and also it speaks about the branding, marketing plan, everything that has been mentioned. Now. It is district specific and it is a very good use for it, very useful for all the prospective inter food entrepreneurs, basically. And uh, for uh, uh, we can say uh, better care and help of the beneficiaries, uh, a dedicated email address is also designed to support any type of queries through that is called Udisa uh, MS, PMFME at the red gmail.com that has been created. And uh, we are also using various social media connects, WhatsApp group, Twitter, Instagram, that has been designed to support the health desk and beneficiary care support. And uh, uh, definitely we have to go uh, uh, ahead of that. We are also working uh, for development of like common infrastructure. Uh, for the FPOs, for the groups, for the beneficiaries, for the uh, also individuals. So it can be also utilized by other stakeholders on a hiring basis. And uh, this common infrastructure would basically provide uh, premises for assaying of agricultural produce, sorting, branding, and the grading, warehousing, and the cold storage facility will be also there at the farm gate of the common processing facility for the processing of this ODOP process produce. And uh, uh, you would be happy to know uh, that uh, OUT is a very premier institution in this sector, has been engaged as a state uh, level technical institute, uh, who is working towards uh, setting up of uh, incubation centers uh, to strengthen all technical knowledge and uh, of these micro food processing enterprises, and uh, to, so that they, they can develop world class food products in Odisha. And uh, these uh, incubation centers will basically provide skill development and training for the all primary, secondary, and tertiary process, uh, processing. And also will train about the V packaging and also uh, about the uh, benefits of the cold storage facilities. Everything will be available in this incubation. It will be like a, uh, a common facility will be available for all of them. And uh, uh, we are also giving, through this program, we are giving a special focus to also SCST group women and uh, aspirational districts to and also to the SCST groups and the uh, producer corporates, basically. And uh, you will be happy also to know that for each and every district, at least five to six uh, DRPs have been engaged. Because what happened, these are the new age, uh, in fact, entrepreneurs, so they have very less knowledge about preparation of business plan, about the scheme, about how to prepare the DPR. It was all kind of handholds for these DRPs are being engaged uh, in all the districts to give all handhold support right from the beginning till the grounding of that unit. And also for the branding and marketing, we are leveraging, we are uh, leveraging the advantage that we have the expertise of the ORMAS and also one of the tribal corporation that is TDCO1 uh, for a standardization of branding and marketing of the uh, processed product. Uh, these are the in fact steps that have been uh, taken uh, so far, uh, but still we have to go, uh, you know, we have to do so many things uh, ahead and we are in a process to bring all kind of uh, technological, uh, you know, facilities so that it will be very easy to them uh, to get all kind of benefits as quickly as possible. Thank you so much, Mr. Alam. I think uh, uh, rightly, if uh, 
every day you can uh, create local markets and develop them definitely uh, state can see exponential growth in industrial sector uh, thank you so much and now i'll be taking a quick closing remarks from the remaining speakers because uh, we are running short of time here so, so uh, uh, i'll request uh, mr mishra to kindly um, uh, share your closing remarks on this topic mr sanjay kumar mishra managing director of optcl this is one of the very happy efforts that by which we could really know about each other and the initiative that is being taken by all of the departments uh, particularly transportation department which really involves and affects the common man and we always look at that that it should be really hassle free the same thing is for industries and other department of uh, gridco and uh, enit and uh, others so you will be um, and i will be requesting that more of such type of interaction should be arranged and organized by you and because of the paucity of the time is other issues that we were we could have really discussed that could be discussed so but this is one of the good things thank you very much thank you so much mr mishra and uh, for encouraging us and we'll be definitely having such more uh, discussions like that and we'll keep inviting you and uh, uh, mr silochan panda managing director of gridco grid corporation of india your closing remarks please so far as uh, uh, technology is and in, uh, digital technology are concerned actually the electricity distribution sector is at the uh, is the most important area where actually the technology Uh, participation or technical interventions are required, and they have been doing so. Uh, particularly in the COVID uh, period, actually the Department of Energy, in collaboration with uh, the distribution companies, which are now privatized, uh, during this COVID period, under the 5T initiative of the state government, we have rolled out a mobile application, so under which a web portal also called Mo Bidur, under Mo Sarkar initiative. and uh, for providing online service to uh, the consumers of the state uh, for new service connections bill payment consumer grievance redressal so so about 1 and 1/2 lakh we will be happy to know that about 1 and 1/2 lakh consumers uh, uh, applied for uh, new service connections so that were processed also uh, under mobile applications so we have resolved around 1000 uh, 6000 consumer grievances registered to online mode and uh, and the and the footfall is growing almost month on month it is growing and uh, we have been monitoring this on a continuous basis we have a um, uh, i mean kind of dedicated team which is working on a daily basis to follow up with the consumers and uh, taking their feedback as well and we are uh, sharing this with the uh, government uh, energy department as well uh, primarily the digital technologies are actually in a mode of improvement uh, the present uh, distribution companies which are operating under public private partnership mode they have um, recently rolled out a new uh, mbc model called metering billing collection modules which are which are more uh, kind of public participation is involved where a lot of digital technologies are also part of the full system we have a system called revenue collection system which is called rcs where actually it's like a uh, it's completely online on metering billing collection where uh, Uh, the modules operate on a kind of prepaid wallet system so it is uh, very much kind of uh, um, secured and you know it ensures the revenue stream of the distribution companies and uh, uh, very well uh, uh, engineered also and uh, under mo sarkar initiative again uh, all public offices of energy department which includes about uh, executive engineers offices electrical inspector offices so 148 offices are covered and um, they we all uh, take feedback from those uh, uh, those users of them so another important thing is actually which i wanted to uh, bring it to the knowledge of our uh, uh, esteemed panelists also so there are a lot of challenges which are uh, they are in the digitalization uh, initiative of the government of odisha so one of the major challenges is the capacity building and the skill development at the grassroots level uh, maybe at the level of uh, section subdivisions and engineers offices and the digital ecosystem is to be created through their participation only otherwise 
uh, it cannot be driven from the top actually. So this is uh, very important. And the next challenge is also the adequate infrastructure for implementing those systems. As my, my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Mishra has already told that actually they have gone, a, I mean, OPTCL has gone a long way in converting the digital backbone, um, uh, like optical fiber network. So those kind of uh, uh, infrastructure is very much necessary to implement and the policy support is very much important to implement uh, you know, digital uh, initiatives, uh, not only in the energy sector, but also in all the sectors so that uh, the benefit of that goes to the common man. And the final and the most important challenge is to increase the awareness among the people so that, uh, so, so, the, so the, the, the system is built to take the benefit out of that. So, so a lot of people participation is necessary for which you have to create awareness and to digital innovations and adapt the new technologies. So thank you very much for this interaction. And I am also delighted to know about the industry department initiatives, uh, the initiatives of the transport department, which is very encouraging and we see it in the day in day out also. So thank you very much for the invite. I thank you, Mr. Manda. I think uh, you rightly highlighted the challenges related to digitalization, and I think IT department stakeholder is there with us, and I think they can, they, uh, Ms. Soen will make a note of it. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, moving on, I'll request Dr. Manuranjan to kindly share your closing remarks, please. Our main focus is now to uh, mainstreaming vocational education in school and mass education, higher education, and uh, technical education as for NEP 2020. And uh, the drive which began in 2011, there's many things to unfold in the coming years. Focusial's vision for the next 10 years is to contribute towards achieving the uh, sustainable development goals, SDG goals by the United Nations, along with the empowerment of youth, that is, is focusing the, on the development of women entrepreneurship in that network of small and medium digital entrepreneurs, thereby contributing towards SDG zero poverty, no hunger, and gender equality. Green jobs is also one of the area in which uh, the corporation is serious to work upon, hereby fulfilling SDG goals of life on land, and holistic development and social transformations needs work at the grassroots level. And that is what OKCL has been doing and would continue to do in its journey ahead. We are very much uh, connected uh, across the state with 500 entrepreneurs, our centers, and definitely we will do towards the social transformations and contribute, contribute uh, which one is required in our society? Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manojan. And I think I'll now move on to Mr. Sohan Notial. Um, I know there a lot uh, is there with the state of Florida to talk, talk about IT innovations, but here, right now, I'll request you to quickly uh, give your closing remarks and uh, just uh, an idea of how uh, Odisha is looking forward for IT innovations in, in the state. So uh, one of the key things uh, which is very important is infrastructure. Okay, in that perspective, uh, state is more focused in providing the connectivity uh, till last milestone. So in, the, in, in that perspective, internet and uh, the broadband connecti connectivity is important to get the government uh, services uh, remotely. So that's uh, one of the thing. And in this, uh, I would like to just uh, highlight on uh, uh, no, uh, that uh, Bharatnet phase one, we have covered around uh, 3,991 uh, GPs, okay, connectivity, and uh, as part of the phase one. And phase two, uh, connectivity provided at uh, 2,882 GPs. Okay. And apart from that, one, uh, another key initiative was to fiber to the home, okay, where uh, uh, no, to have uh, lay down of the uh, optical fibers. Uh, this was done by using, uh, no, no. Uh, so basically estimation was done by using the drone technology, okay, for laying down of the optical fibers. And, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, as part of this initiative, around 2,386 GPs in phase one is covered and uh, some 1,729 GPs in phase two. Uh, so, the, 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 so that's the key, you know, 
highlights uh, in infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sohan. And now I'll move on to Mr. Alam. Uh, before I request Mr. Arun for final closing remarks, I'll request uh, Mr. Sadiq Alam to share the closing remarks. So at the end of this discussion, I would say uh, uh, the e-governance landscape of Odisha definitely has radically challenged in terms of scale, scope, and learning parameters. As technology and transformation being the cardinal principle of our uh, 5P model of governance, and uh, our state has always focused on making citizen participation more meaningful uh, using this digital technology. And we will continue our effort and uh, we'll work constantly moving up the ladder of participation in our country. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alam. And Mr. Arun, I, now I request you to kindly close this discussion with your final remarks. It was very enlightening for me also. Uh, I can very quickly say two, three things. Number one, our government and my department, of course, we are very aggressive on use of technology for enforcement, road safety, customer consumer satisfaction, all kinds of registration permits and everything. So technology is the key. We all understand. We all understand that the kind of workload we are having, only technology can help us. And I can just tell you one more thing that uh, in a government system, you know, or in any system, there's always a uh, there's some dearth of money that when you go for some project, you have to satisfy, you have to justify, you have to cut short some time. But my experience says that whenever we go to the government in our department, they ask if it is a technology-based solution, you ask for the money and it is yours. So if you're coming with something traditional, don't come to us. Maybe we will not be able to fund that project. But if, we're, if you are coming with anything which has technology, which will be helping people, which is, uh, which is making citizens' life easier, user-friendly, customer-friendly, citizen-friendly, and technology based. Anything you take, I think rest of the my panelists will also agree with that. You go to the government, no dearth of money, no dearth of money. Every time you go, the money you you are you are encouraged, you are given money, and you are rather praised and encouraged that okay, you are coming with something new to help the citizens. So that is I'm I'm telling this on behalf of all the panelists uh, in, in, from, from our government. Our government is very, very aggressive on the technological front and uh, we are trying everything possible in all the departments uh, where the, by use of technology, uh, the, the, the delivery of governance, the delivery of government services can be increased, can be improved and, and citizens' life can be made better and happier. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Aaron. I think uh, you know, we, I have a lot of of questions already uh, still there with me to ask you all and because a lot of work is being done with your um, respective departments and companies and but uh, we have a um, challenge of time and uh, uh, we are already exceeding the time so thank you so much here i'll be closing this discussion and we look forward to interact with you in the in future with more of your innovations and initiatives to better the life of the people thank you so much Thank you everyone for getting into the minute details of the discussion. Certainly there's a lot to filter from this discussion. While we'll take a short break, you all can collate the learnings and share with your colleagues and friends on social media using the hashtag ETTransformingUrsa. Transforming Odisha.